This is the new Fierce Mountain Reaper. The story here starts with a couple million of you who watched a YouTube short that I did where I challenged the CEO of Fierce Firearms to a little shooting competition, 600 yards, three shots at an apple. Well, I thought that he hit it on the third shot and so he didn't owe me the gun. But after posting the video, several of you eagle-eyed watchers noticed that actually he hit the metal on that third shot. And so that was the Reaper. Now they've come out with the Mountain Reaper, an incredibly lightweight modern rifle. You guys are gonna love this thing. That's completely stupid. Why would anyone need a $3,000 hunting rifle just to get out there and catch some deers? I can go to Wally World and get a Ruger American for 350 bucks and I bet it can outshoot your fancy gun. So that's today on Backfire. It's pro hunting rifles versus broke hunting rifles. We're gonna first choose our accessories carefully to get a broke budget versus a pro budget. Then we're gonna take this thing out to the range and see if there's actually a difference in a shooting competition between the expensive premium rifles and the cheap basic rifle. This segment sponsored by Aura. True story this happened this week to a Backfire subscriber. He fell victim to a scam on YouTube where people are asking to send a bunch of personal identifying information because you want a giveaway. And then after you send that, they say, okay, now pay for shipping and I'll send you the item impersonating the YouTuber. Well, unfortunately, he sent a bunch of personal info before he recognized it was a scam. So he went to aura.com slash backfire and got a subscription so that it can help to prevent the spread of that information on the dark web. They monitor for your leaked passwords because they have a password manager built in, your identifying information, and even prevent financial fraud. But Aura is a lot more than just identity theft protection. They also have a VPN, parental controls, an antivirus, and a lot more. Go to Aura.com slash backfire. That'll give you a two-week free trial so you can check and see what information of yours is being spread on the dark web and then keep your subscription to have your information protected long-term. That's Aura.com slash backfire or click the link in the description or the QR code. All right, we got to scope this thing. So what most people do is they're going to buy a little cheap 25, 75, maybe $100 scope and put it on the rifle. I've seen that done a few times and I've seen it ruin hunts when they get water inside the scope during the hunt or the crosshairs just break. I've seen that plenty of times on cheap scopes. And so something like this Blackhound Genesis 4 to 14 by 44, it's a fine scope. You know, it's not high end at all, uh, but it will work on a hunting rifle. And so that's what I'm gonna use on the Ruger American. Oh man, I'm excited about this. All right, for the pro setup, we're going no holds barred. This scope is sick. So I showed you guys this at SHOT Show. It's brand new on the market. This is the Burris Veracity PH. It might look like a normal scope, but it is not a normal scope. The way this scope works is when you use your rangefinder, like this new rangefinder from Burris, let's say you look out, whatever you see is 573 yards to the animal you're about to shoot, right? Well, you don't have to then go to a ballistic solver and figure everything out and then dial your MOA or mills here, though you can use it that way. This thing has a heads up display in the scope. That heads up display is going to show you in yards what you're dialed to. So you just dial to 573 or whatever your rangefinder said and bam, you're on. It connects to an app where you put in the ballistics for your rifle and it does everything with you. I am super stoked about trying this futuristic scope on a very futuristic rifle. But we gotta deck this thing out with a few more things. This has an Arca rail right here, and so we'll bring a tripod, a bipod for any prone stages, and a suppressor. One of the best parts about going to a more expensive rifle is you get exotic materials that make the gun really lightweight. Magnesium, a titanium action, and carbon fiber just everywhere on this Fierce Mountain Reaper. With nothing on it, it weighs six pounds, six ounces, fully ki kitted up with everything. It is at nine pounds, four ounces. That's impressive. Well, this is about to get real awkward. My gun weighs six pounds, five ounces with nothing on it. 
and fully kitted up, it's only eight pounds, two ounces. My gun's significantly lighter weight and I only spent 350 bucks. Okay, okay, it's true that that is a lightweight hunting rifle, but it comes at a cost. Well, look at the barrel. The barrel's pencil thin, so you'll shoot two shots in your group, it'll look good, and then you'll start kicking them out because the barrel's heating up and it's real thin. Look at the stock. Yeah, it's a lightweight stock, but it's just thin injection molded plastic everywhere and you, it doesn't fit you. You don't have an adjustable cheek piece. It's not rigid and so a bipod can move the forend and cause it to contact the barrel and cause flyers. The real benefit of this gun is that it's very lightweight, but with all of the full features that you could imagine. Welcome to the Red Cliffs shooting range. We're gonna put these things through the paces. We're gonna start with both guns shooting five shot groups at 100 yards and we're gonna give both of them every advantage. In later stages, the cheaper gun, if it touches a bipod or a tripod, that's included in how expensive the setup is. But here we're gonna give them both the best case solid rest to shoot off of, just so that we see what they're capable of. Let's start with the cheapo. I'm pretty excited to show off the Ruger American. Reason I chose this to represent the basic rifles is for $350, I've had excellent, excellent accuracy out of this gun. Hopefully it likes this load so we can show it off. This Blackhound scope is good for the price that it is, but it definitely doesn't have the clarity of a more expensive scope. Oh, the feeding is so much better. You can just feel the action. It's just way smoother on this thing. Feels like a totally different class of gun. Oh, this scope is so nice to shoot out of. You can just see everything so much more clear. And I love on the top of the scope, it has an inclinometer built in. So you don't need a bubble level on the side. The scope itself shows you when you're level. That is just a really cool feature that will help a lot when we shoot long range. You know, Funny thing, this rifle's 6.5 PRC and the other's a 6.5 Creedmoor. And despite this being a heavier recoiling platform, the recoil feels substantially less than on the Creedmoor. When you have a premium recoil pad, you had a suppressor on there, it cuts the recoil so much that it, honestly, there's less recoil on this thing. Okay, let's go see how we did. Coming up to it, you can see it here. Cheap gun fans, you got yourself a win. It won by five one hundredths of an inch in this test. Now obviously this is just one load. This inexpensive gun comes with a one MOA guarantee, but most inexpensive guns don't have any accuracy guarantee. Whereas the Fierce comes with a half MOA guarantee. And so I have every confidence if I work with a couple different loads, I'll be able to get it to that accuracy standard that they guarantee. But it's impressive, very impressive, what some cheap guns can do in terms of accuracy that I've highlighted on this channel. But also I've tested other cheap guns on this channel that just couldn't shoot at all. I see a Mossberg Patriot. And so you get a little bit of a mixed bag in terms of accuracy on the cheaper end. And on the higher end, you can pretty well guarantee what's gonna happen because the companies back it up. But there's no denying, the win on this one goes to the cheap gun. I must say that shooting these two guns is a completely different experience. This one just, everything fits you perfectly, but the trigger quality is also noticeable. This is using a Bixen Andy Dakota trigger. And so when you pull it, it just, there's no and then it kind of breaks this you just you just increase pressure slowly and it breaks it can be safely adjusted from one to four and a half pounds it's a very impressive trigger and you'll see it has a thumb shelf here if you're used to shooting a more modern rifle instead of wrapping your thumb around like a beer can you put it up top so that you get a perfect 90 degree trigger press it makes you just a lot less likely to throw a shot you're not gonna go from a one MOA shooter to a half MOA shooter by switching to a better, better trigger, but you will be a lot less likely to throw shots. On this Ruger American, it's a pretty good trigger for the price, honestly, but you can feel that and then it goes off.
One feature that's really important to me and anybody who hunts is how high the gun sticks up out of your backpack. If you've ever tried to go through thick brush or something in Kodiak, Alaska, if your gun is sticking up too far, it makes it impossible to walk through as your gun snags on everything. One feature of many modern higher end precision chassis rifles is they have a folding stock. See how that just folds up with the push of one button. And even though I have a six inch suppressor on the end, if I put them bottom to bottom, even with the suppressor, the pro rifle is a lot more packable. It makes a difference even if you're putting it in a smaller car to travel to the shooting range. I really like features like that and you're only gonna find it on a higher end rifle right now. Now for a basic rifle, this thing is really impressive, but if it did have an Achilles heel, it would be in the feeding department. Every time I put a magazine in, I wanna know that I am 100% of the time going to get reliable feeding. On this rifle, I would probably only call it 90%. A lot of the time I can cycle through and, oh, see right there, it didn't grab the second cartridge. And I've gotta kinda mess with it a little bit to get there. <laughs> okay, this isn't planned. Usually this rifle feeds okay, but there are times that it hiccups and it's probably 90% of the time that it gets it right. But sometimes just like we saw, it will jam up, especially because this is a plastic magazine going in a plastic magwell with a plastic catch. And so you go out on a colder day, things are brittle and you know different expansion than when it's a hot day. And so on cheap guns, especially because we're in this plastic stock craze right now in the market, I see feeding problems on nearly every gun in that inexpensive category. Whereas when I go to the premium rifles, ta -ta -ta -ta, are using metal magazines and much more firm catches so that you can get much more reliable feeding. A fine, more expensive rifle is so nice, not just for the smoothness of moving the bolt, but that when you're hunting, you know 100% of the time you can get that cartridge in there. A side note that I would make though, is on very expensive mountain rifles, often like this rifle, they're using a titanium action. And I've never met a titanium action that I'm crazy over. I really prefer a stainless steel action. They're just a lot more smooth, a lot less catch as you go forward. And so I would say there's a little bit of a sweet spot maybe before you get to the crazy high end of titanium actions. I like a stainless. Fierce does offer all of their rifles in stainless actions and I really prefer it. All right, here's the first shooting scenario. This is about 80 yards. You gotta shoot this from a low position. 80 yards, it should be easy enough to just shoot normal, but I'm not gonna leave anything to chance. I'm gonna shoot off a bucket here because I'm not gonna lose because of a bonehead 80 yard shot. Oh yeah, take that! Terrible shooting position, but it worked. Nailed for shot number one. Let's see if the pro rifle can do that. Now, with the pro setup, this is child's play. I don't know what that embarrassing thing was that we just watched with the bucket, but we see this is exactly 71 yards. Obviously no adjustment needed for that. Now a tripod has become a very important part of my shooting. Even when I go hunting, lately I've been bringing a tripod that you guys have seen on the hunts. It's pretty small, you can pack it in your backpack and then because this rifle has an ARCA rail right here, all I've got to do is set it on the tripod and lock it. And then when I release this, it just becomes like a little turret. It's like, it's impossible to miss with this setup. No problem. So that last one was easy. What I wanted to kind of highlight is that Really, if your accuracy standard, you're hunting and you're gonna hunt from a tree stand and you got a max 100 yard shot, most hunting rifles are gonna do just fine. But people want rifles that are very versatile today. They want something that they can go hunt with and also take it out to the range and shoot a thousand yards. They can fit a lot of different purposes. But this one is a hunting situation that I had just this year. I was hunting a deer and at 200 yards, 
a coyote popped out and I thought, oh sweet, I want to shoot at the coyote. And there was very thick brush all in front of me. There was just no way to hike down quietly. And so I had to shoot above the brush, a standing shot. So standing shot, 200 yards at the milk jugs. This is a little bit difficult. I'm gonna shoot at the jug further away from the camera because I don't want to accidentally hit the camera. 200 yards standing is not easy. Some people could probably do it, but that's a tough shot for me. Oh, I got it! Yeah, baby! Yeah, I was everywhere. I was wobbling up, down, left, right, and I was just trying to time my shot as I went over it. That was sweet. Okay, now we're going to get a rangefinder so we can get an exact range. And now we know it's 193 yards. This is where I get to test out a little bit, not very far, not much of an adjustment. But now I can just spin the turret and look inside the turret and it shows me exactly what I'm spinning to. It's kind of a weird system because there are no clicks on the turret. When you spin the turret, there are no clicks at all. It's smooth so that you can get the exact yardage even between clicks. The gun is only a little piece of a shooting system. Uh, you know, your scope, your support makes a big difference. And in fact, maybe before I spent big money on a rifle, I'd want to get good support, bipods, things like that. That'll improve you as a shooter a ton. Let's go ahead and take this. It shouldn't be difficult. I don't think I'm even going to tighten down the tripod. Boom, baby. All right. This is easy stuff. I mean, we're shooting max 200 yards. Now we're going to stretch this thing way out and see what it can do. All right, we're ready to take a long shot. I can't decide how to do this fairly because if I use the range finder, then I've got to include that in the price. But this is far. We're going way near the top of that mountain up there. So I think I'm going to try shooting this without a range finder. I'm not going to dial, but instead just kind of do it like our grandparents did and just hold a little bit high. My guess is I'm going to want to hold about three feet high on that. I couldn't get the camera up there because it keeps dying by the time we get back down here. And so we're going to have to listen to the spotter on this one to hear if we get an impact. Also, I'm going to use my backpack and a jacket as support without a bipod because this is the basic setup. Oh, uh, is it a mess? I think I got dirt. Dang! I didn't quite hold enough. All right, we're going to the pro setup here. None of this stuff. Shooting off a bipod. I'm not going to use a rear bag because I usually don't have that hunting. 563. Okay, I'm on it. I think I'm just going to hold here so I can adjust that turret. Yeah! Water, baby! Woo! All right. Well, we did it. So the verdict on that Veracity pH system, that is cool. I am very curious to play with that a little bit more. The potential that I'm seeing is, man, when you're hunting, I always feel like it's such a garage sale. You know, you, there's the deer, and you gotta, whatever, get out your phone or look at your little bore, your paper on the side of the gun, trying to figure out, you know, what your wind hold is and everything. And so the potential for that, that I could just get the distance and then bam, it shows me right in the scope when I'm there. That is really cool. I also like having that inclinometer built in there. It looks like a very interesting system. I want to test it out more at the further distances and see how good the ballistic solver really is. So what's the verdict on cheap versus pro hunting setups? Well, I think one thing that we could all agree with is Cheap rifles are really impressive today, and you can get some very good accuracy and quality out of them for the price that you're paying. If you're pinching your pennies, definitely spend the money on a cheap rifle and then spend it on experiences. Actually go hunting, take your kids blacktail deer hunting in Kodiak, go to South Africa with that budget. But if you're ready to step up to something, that will last you a long time, your entire life, plus your kids' lives, then there is some amazing innovation and engineering in pro rifles that I definitely think is worth it. This is one of the coolest guns I have ever shot, 
and I am super stoked to build up a load for this thing and take this thing deer hunting. Thanks for joining me in this episode of Cheap vs. Pro Rifle. We'll see you in the next video.